Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with www.learnvisualstudio.net. In this lesson, we'll begin learning about the XAML syntax. Honestly, it's pretty easy to figure out uh, the absolute basics of XAML just by looking at it. I mean, I can imagine that whatever you saw in the previous lesson, uh, you were able to at least figure out the correlation between the tags, the properties, and what you saw in the Visual Designer, right? Well, what I want to accomplish is to talk about some of its features and functions that may not be so obvious at first glance. So we're going to take a couple of passes at this in short videos that, when combined together, will give us a pretty thorough understanding of XAML and how it all works. In this first lesson, we're going to talk about the purpose and the nature of XAML, especially in comparison to C-sharp. Then in the next few lessons, we're going to talk about the special features of XAML, little hidden features of the language that, again, may not be obvious when you first start looking at it. So my aim is that by the end of these first set of lessons, you're going to have enough knowledge that you can look at the XAML that we write together and the remainder of this series, and you're going to be able to take a pretty good guess at what it's trying to do before I even explain what it does. All right, so first of all, let's talk about what XAML is. In the previous lesson, I made a passing remark about how XAML looks similar to HTML, and that's no accident. XAML is really just XML, the extensible markup language. Uh, I'm going to explain that relationship in just a moment, but at a higher level, XML looks a lot like HTML in so much that they share a common ancestry. Now, whereas HTML is specific to structuring a web page document, XML is a little bit more generic in nature. And by generic, I mean that you can use it for any purpose that you devise, and you can define the names and the elements and the attributes to suit your needs. Now, in the past, developers have used XML for things like storing application settings or using it as a means of transferring data between two systems that were never intended to work together. And uh, to use XML, you start off by defining what's called a schema, which declares the proper names of the elements and their attributes. And so a schema is kind of like a contract that two parties agree to. Everybody agrees, both the producer of the XML and the consumer of the XML, to write and read the XML to conform to those rules set forth in the contract. I mean, the schema. Uh, and now that they both agree that they're working in the same rules and the same contract, they can communicate with each other. So a schema is a really important part of XML. And just keep that in mind, because we're going to come back to that in just a moment. Now, XAML is a special usage of XML. Now, obviously, we see, in, at least in this case, XAML has something to do with defining a user interface uh, for, our, for our application. So in that regard, it feels a lot like HTML, but there's a big difference. XAML is actually used to create instances of classes and set values of their properties. So for example, in the previous lesson, we created a little Hello World application. I kind of expanded on that here just to get it, give it a little more design. I, uh, I added a button and notice that I put all the attributes on separate lines so now we can see uh, hopefully the definition a little bit better. Let me actually make a little more room here. We're going to rely less and less on the visual designer. Uh, in fact, we may even start getting rid of it completely. But you can see here that I created a red button called Click Me. And there's also a message text block that will appear below it. So it's very much like what we did before. I just started over from scratch. And what I want to do uh, is, well, first of all, let's, um, let's go ahead and... Uh, Take a look at the code behind, and uh, we'll set the text block equal to what is XAML, the topic of this lesson, whenever you click the button. So let's run the application briefly, just to show that there's nothing up my sleeve. And we click it, and we get the result. Great. OK, so now what I want to do just to demonstrate how XAML works is to actually comment out this button control. And I'll use the, the syntax that you would use if you're familiar with HTML and how to comment out things. It's just this open bracket, exclamation mark, dash, dash, to start the commented section. And then to end the commented section, you just do dash, dash, closing angle bracket, like so. And you can see that in Visual Studio's uh, code editor that it appears green by default. Okay, so now that we've gotten rid of it, uh, what I'm gonna do is actually come back over here. Well, actually, a couple of things. 
Um, I already gave this a name, but by default, whenever you create a new project, the grid does not have a name. I gave it the name layout grid because that is indicative of what it's actually doing for us. And then the other thing that I want to do is whenever the page loads, so I'm going to go um, find the uh, load loaded event. I'm going to create a new event handler called page loaded. I'm going to use the F12 key on my keyboard to pop that open in the code behind. And so now I'm going to write code that will execute whenever the page has loaded into memory. And uh, this is going to take me a little bit and hopefully you'll see why and it'll prove what I'm trying to explain here. So I might even just kind of start this out and then fast forward near the end of this typing exercise. I don't recommend that you do this. Okay, so it took me about two minutes to type all this out. I'm not the slowest typist in the world, but uh, this was pretty thick typing. IntelliSense helped a lot. I made a few mistakes along the way. But uh, the point of this is if we actually run the application, I want to show you what it does. Hey, it created a red button almost identical. In fact, it is identical to the one that we defined in XAML. And if we click it, it gives me the same result. So the point that I'm making here is that it took all of this C sharp code to do what I was able to do in basically just one line of code. Now I've spaced it out over several lines, but you can see that you that the C sharp version of this is much more verbose. And then secondly, what we're really doing when we're defining uh, elements and attributes in XAML is that we're creating new instances of classes in the uh, Universal Windows Platform API and defining and setting their attributes, their properties, just like we're doing here in this code. All right. By the way, before I forget, if you want to follow along and do this exercise yourself, uh, I will add the, I already have the before where we started out and I'll add this code that I just typed in as the after. So you'll be able to get at this project. What is XAML? So the important takeaway is this, that XAML is simply a way to create instances of classes and set those objects properties in a much more simplified, succinct syntax. What took us, what, uh, 12 lines of code, 13 lines of code in C Sharp, only took one line of XAML, even if I did separate it out. Uh, it's still much shorter than it would have been had I used C Sharp to create all of my objects. Furthermore, whenever I do use XAML, I get this automatic feedback here in the, uh, this, the, uh, the visual designer, in the preview pane. So I can see the impact of my changes instantly if I choose to work like that. So in the case of the procedural C sharp that I wrote, I'd have to run the application each time that I wanted to see how my tweaks uh, to the code actually worked. So, okay, that's it. That's the point of this lesson. Uh, twofold. One, that XAML is just a specific flavor of XML. It follows all the rules of XML. Somebody defines a schema a contract and then both the producer and the consumer of the XML agree to the contract uh, and then they can begin to work together knowing that they're uh, that they're pretty much on the same page now in this case the the contract is XAML and it was defined by Microsoft the producer of the XML is you and me and Visual Studio and then the consumer of the XML is the compiler which will turn our code into X in an executable that will run in Windows 10. And so that's the first point. And the second point of this lesson was that XAML is an easy way to create instances of classes and set their properties. And sure, you could do it all in C Sharp, but it's much more verbose and uh, you would lose the design time tooling that we've become accustomed to in here in two or three short videos. Okay, so actually this example that we just created has a few other little interesting features of XAML that I want to explain a little bit further. And so I'll start that process in the very next lesson. Thank you.